America's favorite pastime, and there's a reason, because baseball is awesome. And here's why. You get to do lots of catching, you get to do lots of hitting, but you also get to do lots of throwing, and that's really the topic of today's video, is talking about all the different things that go around in the shoulder, because with baseball, it's a, it's a very explosive sport. It's, it's not like going out and running or, or, or shooting hoops. You go from absolutely doing nothing, standing completely stationary, to running really fast, and then going back to standing and doing nothing, and, or hitting, or the same thing with throwing. So it goes from nothing to very explosive. Okay, Just knowing this, well, let's dive into the joint a little bit. So this is the shoulder. The main things you really need to know about are this just bone right here. This is that arm bone. It sits right here. Okay, And, and then we got this one up here. This is, this is your clavicle, your collarbone. You've heard about people breaking that uh, sometimes, and then they can't move their arm forever. Uh, and then this one in the back, uh, th this one is your scapula. It's, it's the one that sits back here. It's that, that chicken wing bone back there. Now, all these little joints work together just to make this, this one joint right here. And knowing a lot about it is extremely important because if you're a throwing athlete, you really need to know what's going on in this part right here. So, okay, this is a picture of the back of the shoulder. So if you're standing behind me and looking at my back, uh, this is what this picture is. Uh, one of the key things we want to talk about today is the rotator cuff. Everybody's heard of it. Uh, sometimes there's some myths about it, but we're going to clear a few of them up in today. Okay, so up here we got a, a muscle right here. It's called your supraspinatus. It's the one on the top. Okay, and then right here we have your infraspinatus. And over here, we have your teres minor. Now, all these come together to make this little part of the cuff right here. Okay, This is oftentimes that thing that you feel right in here sometimes if it gets sore, uh, particularly from throwing. Okay. Now, also we got up here, we have this ridge of bone just like this. Okay, This is known as your chromium. And, and this is also going to be the top of a conversation for a part of the reason why lots of injuries happen. All right, now we've got to take a different view. This is you looking in front of me, and this is what the inside part of the shoulder looks like. Again, we got more of where that rotator cuff come, cu comes across here. Uh, again, getting back to that bone up here, which we'll be highlighting. And this is the other part right here of that rotator cuff. It's your subscapularis. Uh, all four of them come together to basically keep the shoulder joint moving in, in, in place because there are lots of different things that are going on at any given time when you throw. And, and these muscles' job is to keep everything nice and centered because we don't want this arm bone getting out of hand. All right, so knowing all these things, well, we also have to include, there's some ones in the back which kind of determine the position of, the, of uh, these two uh, bones in the back, the scapula, as we talked about before, and they kind of move things in and out, and they tilt it forward and backward, and what's important to know about them is they're big with positioning, and in a lot more videos to come, I'm going to be highlighting how important these muscles are. But for today's purposes, here's what I really want you to know. It is extremely difficult when you throw for all these muscles to work together. You have a bone sitting here, you got this little collarbone thing right here, you got this arm swinging out, and, and believe it or not, it's actually these big chest and back muscles are which give you all that power to throw a ball. Because of this, just being a millisecond off can be the difference between having a good throw and having your arm dislocate or tear. And knowing this, this is why a lot of these injuries occur when athletes are very fatigued. I will use this as an example. Okay, so here is the inside of your uh, bone. If I was kind of turning sideways here, it'd, it'd be from looking out and looking in. I'm now going to play the role of that humerus bone that's going up and down. So I'm going to come on over here, just like this. Okay, so here's what happens. You do lots of throwing all the time, and you do a little twisting and a little turning, and it's all great and wonderful. And everything stays pretty centered right in the middle. But here's what happens. As the arm gets a little fatigued, well, I start bobbing around a little bit more, oh, moving around, and we remember I talked about that acromion right here. Okay, so what happens is, is we start getting out of head. Ow! Oh, hit my head. Okay, I'm okay. And then you throw again, and then uh, ow! Ah, God, I hit it again. And then one more time, and uh, ow! Gosh, that kills. Now you have to remember, rotator cuff sits right here, and I'm banging into this bone all day. Well, what happens is, is it can cause quite a few problems. And here are a few of them. You can get a lot of tendonitis up there. You can get rotator cuff tears. Uh, that labrum, that tissue that goes across the top of the shoulder, it can start to hurt as well too. And this little bicep tendon also goes through. And that can tear as well. All just because they're all in the same little area because the rotator cuff either got tired or weak or it had bad positioning and it was really hard for it to do its job. 
and the other day it gets hurt even though this muscle being too tight caused problems and this muscle back here being too strong was actually the instigator this little guy right here is going to be the one why your arm's hurting all the time. So if you're an athlete uh, or if you're uh, a parent, if you start noticing some of these things, grabbing the arm a lot, uh, the mechanics start to look funny before they were arm was up here and now it's kind of down here. Uh, if you start seeing a difference in loss of velocity or distance, uh, pain when sleeping, this is a big one, and also joint pain, I kind of describe that as it hurts like this, not like this. Okay. Joint pain is particular, and then if it's like the whole thing, that's just can oftentimes just be soreness. So my recommendations, if you notice any of these sort of things, please talk to your doctor, talk to the trainer, talk to a physical therapist, talk to a healthcare professional. Please do not just go online and start Googling, seeing what can I do to fix what I think may be the problem. It's extremely important you get in front of these people so they can figure out what the problem is, and if, if maybe there isn't one, and then things can be rectified from there. Okay, so if you have any questions, you know, check out the blog, all right? Uh, make any comments that you'd like to see. I would love to hear from them and, and see if this is helpful. And more importantly, if I get lots of comments on something that you're perhaps concerned about, I'd be happy to make a video to address them. Have a great day.